In this section, we shall learn how to extract a subnetwork from a larger vZoom network. Subnetworks are especially useful in performing operational analysis in smaller areas than an entire region, an example of this being microsimulation of specific corridors. vZoom offers an export utility for exporting vZoom models to vSIM. The specifics of the vZoom to vSIM export are discussed in another chapter of this tutorial. In order to generate a subnetwork from a larger network in vZoom, there are essentially two steps. First, select the subnetwork area. Second, export the selected subarea to a version file using the subnetwork generator method in vZoom. Let's go through the steps to export a vZoom subnetwork. First, Open a vZoom version file, then pan and zoom into the area you wish to export as a subnetwork. Now, click the Spatial Selection Edit mode. This will enable the selection of multiple network objects at the same time. There are two ways of selecting the area of interest. The first is to simply drag and drop a rubber banded box. The second way is to hold the control key down, left click at a point in the network window, move the selection boundary and click another point in the network. This may be repeated till the required selection shape has been drawn. Once the shape has been drawn, right click to complete the polygon. If additional network elements need to be selected for the subnetwork, these may be selected by first selecting the network element in the network toolbar and then left clicking over the network element in the network. A left click causes a state change. As a result, when the network element is passive, clicking it once will make it active and clicking it again will make it passive again. Once the required subarea has been selected, the selection may be saved in what is known as the ANE format. This is a file that stores the active network elements in a version file. This feature is especially useful in cases where a user wishes to repeatedly perform subnetwork extraction of the same subarea. Let's see how to save an ANE file. After selecting the required subarea in the vZoom network, Click on the Save Active Network Objects button on the Spatial Selection toolbar. Enter an appropriate name for the subarea ANE file and click Save. This will enable the reuse of this predefined Active Network Object file and automatically result in the selection of the same subarea when opened. To open an ANE file, click the Spatial Selection option. Then click the folder icon on the Spatial Selection toolbar, browse to the ANE file, and click Open. This will bring up the saved Spatial Selection. After selection of the subarea in vZoom, we must now run the subnetwork generator. To do this, go to Calculate the Procedures and then click Subnetwork Generator. Click the Browse button to navigate the location where you want to save your subnetwork version file, give it an appropriate name, and click Save. Select from one of the three options for definition of line routes in the subnetwork. The first option will bring in the entire line route regardless of the state of the line route. The second option will simply leave out whatever is outside the subarea selection. The third option will place a cordon stop at the boundary. If you wish to save all the matrices and demand segments from the parent vZoom model into the subnetwork, check the Matrices Assigned for Demand Segments options. If you wish to save the entire demand model, including all the demand strata and procedures, etc., check the option for Store the Complete Demand Model with the subnetwork. In the Subnetwork Cordon Zones options, the first option, Use Connector Links, is only relevant to PRT networks. If you do not select the option, the Turn Attributes, Turn Prohibitions and Penalties of the flows from the Cordon Zones will be lost. If the option has been selected, all paths that enter the subnetwork at a node obtain a connector link that is based on the link used last outside of the subnetwork. The To node of the connector link will be the first node in the subnetwork. The From node is newly created. 
The connector link, cordon node, and cordon zone receive the same number. The next option for numbering of cordon zones with offset, numbers of the cordon zones will be generated based on the number of the connector node and the specified offset. The option for continuous numbering of subnetwork cordon zones will result in the consecutive numbering of the cordon zones. Select the option appropriate to your case and enter the offset or numbering scheme for the cordon zones. If you wish to assign a special type to the cordon zones, you may enter this zone type for cordon zones. These options will help distinguish between external cordon zones and internal zones in the network. After the inputs have been defined, click OK. This will result in the creation of a subnetwork stored as a separate version file. You may open this version file and explore and work with it. Matrix adjustment tools in Vizum allow the user to estimate synthetic OD matrices for travel demand. These methods may be used for a variety of reasons. For example, updating an old OD matrix to reflect current travel demand based on OD survey or traffic count data. The synthetic OD estimation procedure in Vizum is called T-Flow Fuzzy. To use T-Flow Fuzzy, click Calculate, then Procedures. In the Operations menu, click Create and expand the Matrix tree. Within the Matrix tree, select the Matrix Correction, or T-Flow Fuzzy option, and click OK. The T-Flow Fuzzy procedure is implicitly applied to an OD matrix through a demand segment. Thus, the first step is to select one or several demand segments to which the matrix estimation procedure is to be applied. To do this, click Selection DSEG and select one or more demand segments to which you want to apply the T-Flow Fuzzy procedure and click OK. Next, we define the parameters for the matrix adjustment procedure. Click Parameters. In the Input tab, check or uncheck only network objects with volume greater than zero and counted value greater than zero if you don't wish to apply the procedure to network elements where data is not available or no volumes are assigned to the links. Next, check the counted origin or destination traffic as a basis option if you wish to use the observed OD data for matrix adjustment. Remember that here, by OD, we mean production and attraction vectors and not an OD table. First, select the attribute of the zone which holds origin and destination data by clicking Add Value 1 and Add Value 2. Then, after the plus minus sign, select the zone attribute which holds the tolerance value or allowable error value for both origin and destination. If you wish to use only active zones for the process identified by a filter setting, check the Only Active Zones option. If the adjustment is to be based on link count data, in the Link Volumes area, click Use Counted Volume as basis. If you wish to use only active links for adjustments, click Only Active Links. This option will be applicable in most cases since not all the links in the network will have count data available. As a result, a filter for links may be set so that only links with counts remain active. Then, against volume, select the counted link volume attribute on links by clicking Add Value 1 and then the variable for tolerance by clicking Add Value 2. If turn counts are available, then these may also be used for the matrix adjustment. To do this, check Turn Volumes, then select Active Turns for using only turns with valid count data. Next, against Volume, click Add Value 1 and select the attribute where the turn volume count is stored. Then click Add Value 2 to select the attribute where the error tolerance for the correction is stored. Next, click the Parameters tab. 
Under Protocol Level, select Low if least amount of data is to be stored in the data log for the numerical procedures, and High for highest level of details for the calculations. In the Max Correction Factor option, the correction factor limits any change to a relation from the old matrix to the new one to the factor entered in the Entry tab. In the Cancel Change If option, the calculation is cancelled if, from one iteration to the next, the OD matrices have not changed in any OD pair by more than the specified number of trips. In the number of iterations, enter the maximum number of iterations before stopping if the solution does not converge. Enter an estimate for the number of trips if you have an idea about the estimated number of total trips in the system. For alpha level, enter a scaling factor for fuzzy membership function bandwidth scaling. Mostly, all these options are best left at the default if they are not known. Checking excluded OD pairs without information is best checked only if a link corridor has been counted in an extensive network and you would like to update just the corridor. Using OD pairs, we recommend to set only the links of the corridor to the active state and to check this option. Otherwise, it can be checked off. If you wish to adjust only specific OD pairs in a matrix, you may specify a filter matrix by creating a Boolean matrix, having 1 in OD cells where the adjustment may be applied and 0 where the adjustment should not be applied. Then, checking Adjust Only Active OD Pairs on. In the Flow Matrix options, select Recalculate or Load from File to define how the demand segment's path information from the previous assignment is to be used for matrix correction. Mostly, it is left at Recalculate. In the Output tab, the new adjusted matrix may be saved as a separate matrix by selecting Save to File in the Operation menu and then specifying the location for the adjusted matrix file. Alternatively, if the Replace Demand Matrix option is selected, the values of the demand segment's existing demand matrix originally read from file are replaced by the calculated results in vZoom. After this, click OK and hit Execute to run TFlow Fuzzy. A key thing to keep in mind while using TFlow Fuzzy is that the network must have an assignment executed and pass available before the procedure can be run successfully.